welcome back. Thank you very much for joining us here on Newsfile. This is your most authoritative news analysis platform. It's brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN, everywhere you go. Ashesi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Robert and Sun seeing is believing way lead. Home is where one starts from. Star Assurance, your solid partner. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. DBS Industries and SEMA, helping people and businesses to succeed. And I want to say thank you very much to Evan Spencer for holding the fort for me last Saturday. Um, so this morning you can sit in the comfort of your room and enjoy the show as you said you wish you have. Now, uh, joining us quickly to converse very briefly for you the matters of Fix the Country's demonstration, Hadi Yakubu is Fighter General. What a title. Fighter General, Economic Fighters League. Uh, Felicity Nelson is convener, Fix the Country. And Martin Pebu is a uh, rights activist and he's a lawyer. Thank you very much for joining us via Zoom, gentlemen and lady. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you for having me. Great, great. Uh, here Thanks. in the studio Thanks. is uh, Abdul Malik Kubako, Editor-in-Chief, New Crusading mm -hmm. Guide newspaper. Uh, Dr. Okoboy is former Deputy Minister of Health and member Ghana's COVID-19 Tax Force. We have other guests who will assist us on the other subjects, including uh, Dr. Kwame Sapong Siedu, um, who will let you know the rest of them that join us. Of course, we will, let me just share that with you. We'll have uh, Benjamin Boache, Executive Director, Africa Center for Energy Policy. Dr. Steve Manteo, Chairman Alliance of CSOs, working um, on extractive, anti-corruption and good governance. Andre Japamesa, MP for Second D and Deputy Energy Minister. They will join us. Of course, on the labor front, we have Professor Charles Mafo, National President, University Teachers Association in Ghana. Dr. Kwabnanya Kung Otu, the Chief Economist and Director, Labor Research and Policy Institute, Trace Union Congress, TUC. Dr. Justice Youngson is General Secretary, Ghana Medical Association, and they will help us to uh, do the discussion. Now, let me begin by asking uh, Felicity Nelson, you must be very impressed. Uh, you must have been impressed at the, at the turnout. Uh, people like Franklin Kujo and many others have uh, commended your work that you have uh, been successful at pulling out uh, a massive crowd, even at such a critical time when COVID-19 is deadlier. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So how does that feel after, um, after all maybe, the frustrations that you went through? It, you know, it was probably one of the most epic days of my life. I couldn't believe the number of people who turned up on that day. And, you know, Ghanaian young people showed me that they understood what the issues are. They're not, you know, out of touch. It, it was just amazing. Such an amazing day. Such mm. an amazing day. Right. Uh, take a look at this visual, some of which we captured uh, during your demonstration. And then I'll have, okay, let's have, let's hear Hadi Yakubu also tell us how he feels about it, particularly having people who know how to organize these things and knowing how uh, stressful and difficult it can be, commend you for a good work done. Hadi, how does it feel? Um, yeah, um, Samson, good morning and good morning to everybody on the platform this morning. Um, well, it, it, it feels, it feels uh, great that we can have um, young people, um, I mean, not just young people, but people from all walks of life um, come out in such great numbers. I think the numbers exceeded the expectations of everybody um we we did not put a cap on the number of people we were expecting uh but clearly the numbers were 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 so huge that uh we did not expect them that much but it 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 was great um at least it gives uh, a bit of hope to all of us that 
um, all is not lost. Ghanaians are still able to canvass themselves and come out in such great numbers when it matters uh, for them to, you know, um, demonstrate for um, a, a, a system mm. that they, they want to, you know, represent them. All so, right. yes, the, the feeling was, was, was great. And um, it, it gives hope that something young people uh, and people of this country still have the fervor of, um, you know, patriotism that they want to take forward. Mm. in creating a system for themselves. I will, uh, a I will, I will, I will conclude this interview by a question to the both of you as to whether or not you are not scared, uh, scared in the sense that we know what we are recording now as far as COVID-19 is concerned, that the Delta variant is, is on a rampage and such gatherings may not be helpful. I'll conclude on that note. But before that, uh, let's listen to uh, some of the people who spoke during the demonstration. Let's listen to a few of them. We have analyzed over 8 million tweets on social, on Facebook, and on Twitter, but more importantly, and some on Facebook. And we've been able to systematize a lot of those complaints into about three of four critical issues, which we put out. A lot of them relate to our government and the political system that we've established for ourselves that allows the political class to get away with so many things and, and disables accountability, true accountability. And we've talked about the need for the constitution, a new constitution for a new generation. That's one core proposal that you saw. And past 75 years, okay. must judiciously use our natural resources for development and not all these taxes of citizens creating problems for them. Job, job, I think that's very important that we show that we reject the attitude of the government and we want to create a culture of dissent. It's important that we create a culture of dissent. We show our disapproval. We are tired of the lies. Article 71 office holders are lies. It is bogus. It is a calculated attempt to steal us. We are tired of the mendaciloquence, the zabanism, and the political prostitute. Since Ebufuado came into government in the last five years, how many of the community high schools that Muhammad was building, that, how many of them has he completed? How many of these children have not been sitting under these schools and the trees for the last four years? Recently, we saw that they said the rosewood that's been um, exported illegally, they're going to donate it to the cathedral. Would it not be better used if we use it to build schools for these children who are going to schools under trees? Before they came to government, they told us that borrowing is a lazy must approach. Today, they have borrowed more than 200 million Ghana cities, and the ordinary Ghana cities have used the money for in this country, in the wrong direction. Right. Um, Felicity, what do you say to those who say that you didn't present specific demands to the managers of the country and that mm. is not the best? What do you say to them? Um, I think that one thing we've always said is that fix the country is not about me. It's not about Hadi, it's not about any of us, any of us conveners, it's not about us as individuals. It's about the people of Ghana, it's about creating a platform so Ghanaians can voice their problems. So if the government wants to respond to anything, they should read the placards. They should listen to the people who are speaking in your in the thing you just played and across different media stations. People spoke, people have placards, people have a lot to say. So if they want to respond. To anything, we don't have to give them a position. They know what the problems. As they don't know, they can go across and relate all the information based on all the different media interviews that were conducted on that day, and they can start responding to those things. We do not need to give them a position. We didn't give them a position because we've seen over the years, every time there's a demonstration, people give a petition, but we never see any government come up and respond to any of the things in the petition. So why do we need to bother to engage in this charade? And the reality is that we want, it's not about our voices, it's about the voices of the people. So people have complained, 
about specific things, you know, unemployment, bad roads, education, medical health care. So if they want to start with, they can respond to those things without getting them, without receiving a petition. So mm. we want them to act right. So if they start collating the information, they can look, use the hashtag, fix the country, go on social media. You can start collating every different thing that's been highlighted over the last three, four months. Over the last four months, there's been so many issues which have been highlighted. They can collate that information and use that to pay to, you know, to them to um to so they can use that to to they can use sorry, they can use that to decide on the things they want to work on. But we don't need to give them a petition. The people have spoken. We need to stop having I don't want to speak for people. People have spoken for themselves and you need to listen to the voice of the people mm. and act on it. Right. Now, before you hit the streets in Kumasi and other parts of the country, as you suggest, um, Hadi, listen to this and from the president, and uh, let me get your reaction to that. Yes, the nation is facing challenges, difficulties. But these challenges and difficulties can and will be overcome. They can and will be overcome because we have the policies, we have the program, and we have the values that will enable us to continue our journey of development in freedom. So I'm very happy that I have the opportunity as president to celebrate this day because my whole life has been dedicated to the struggle of our party. And I'm happy. Right. Um, Hadi, do you find the president at this uh, anniversary occasion for the NPP uh, suggesting to you that he's on course, the things you are demanding, they are being fixed already? Yeah, thank you, um, Sina Samson. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, well, it, it's, it's, it's probably some, some bit of progress for an acknowledgement of challenges, you know. But then, I mean, you acknowledge challenges and then just the next sentence, you undo that acknowledgement by repeating exactly the same things that you've been saying over the years that have not satisfied the people. You see, we need to have a governance system that allows for um, feedback and um, re responses to the, uh, to the felt needs of the people. They, they, the sort of things that we need are not necessarily um, a repetition of you know, self praises of we have policies, we have this. It is about the structural and systemic issues that make every government that has come and go from 1992 up to date to be completely wasteful, completely unaccountable, irresponsible, and lack of sensitivity, have lack of sensitivity to the needs of the people. We need to be looking at all these systemic issues. This is not about it is not necessarily about piecemeal policies. It is about what the systemic framework is within which these policies are working, within which these policies are being formulated, mm. such, such that they are done in a way that the system itself can gear them towards the needs of the people. So if we, do not, we are not having a conversation about systemic issues and structural issues, we are just tickling ourselves and laughing. And mm. that's why... That's why a lot of the sentiments that were expressed at the um, at the demonstration, you know, uh, from all walks, people from all walks of life. This was the biggest nonpartisan citizen um, um, led movement. I mean, demonstration in the history of this country. Yeah. And you cannot take it away from the mm. people. Yeah, the, I, 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 I followed I followed a part of it. I followed it partly and I was surprised because initially I thought it was about it was youth that were galvanizing on social media, Twitter, the Facebook, and the rest of them. Then I discovered that very elderly, you know, citizens, this man said he was 70 plus or 75 plus, and he was there uh, demonstrating. But the question is, 
For example, uh, those who are watching, uh, including uh, Samuel Okuja Tua Blackwa says that at this 29th uh, MPP anniversary, um, the president literally, you know, ignored, fixed the country. Um, so what's the point in continuing, as you have promised, to go to the various uh, capitals? You see, um, um, uh, Samson, you earlier asked my colleague Felicity why we didn't submit a petition, um, a list of things. And one of, the, one of the things we've consistently said is that it, it is not our job to list the problems that this country is facing and give them to, to the president the, 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 or, or the government. Mm -hmm. Every government that has come and gone has consistently um, known what the problems of this country are. Go to the National Development Planning Commission, analyze all the development plans that have been produced since 1990. Do you see that the problems of this country are very, very obvious? It is the will, it is the will to create a system that responds to this in a genuine uh, patriotic manner that is not there. And therefore, um, the, 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 the quest of the people of this country in the way that they showed themselves on the streets on the 4th of August, I mean, to, to make sure that the system changes, to, to bring about a sort of accountability and responsibility that cannot um, take for granted the, 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 the power given to governments by, by the citizens and also ignore the felt needs of the people. That quest is um, to force the willingness. It is the willingness to, 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 to create the systems for these problems to be solved that is not there. Mm. And therefore, we, um, we are, we are um, trying to create a platform and a conversation in all parts of Ghana. And it is not about other regions. It is every inch of this country is going to be covered. Okay. And it's not just about demonstrations. Mm. It is also about sensitizing and having conversations about the kind of things, mm. the kind of society that we have built um, for ourselves and that has been built over the years that has consistently failed, you know, to mm. deliver development, to deliver healthcare, to deliver education, to deliver good roads, to deliver all these things that democracy promises, mm. you know. Okay, so hold and, on, and hold on. how that system yeah, hold on, hold is on going for me. to be uh, yes. re-looked at okay. and replaced yeah. with one that caters to the needs of all the people. Hold on for me. Some, say, some say that it seems you are living in an idealistic world. But um, hold on for me briefly. Uh, Martin Pebble, do I have you? Hello, Martin. Yes, yeah, Samson. Yes, I'm here. Great, great, great. So the, mm -hmm. there are aspects, political scientists like Dr. Asasanti of the University of Ghana who says that they need to present an itemized list, even though uh, on their placards we see they want the constitution, you know, uh, overhauled. Of course, this is something that Nana Kufuado preached when he was... Uh, he was a, a, a candidate, even before he was a candidate, he was preaching that we needed to overhaul the constitution. Well, Professor Mills gave us uh, one process. Uh, we have uh, almost a, a thousand page document is, is, gathering, is gathering dust still. Now, what do you say about saying that without such a list, they won't make much progress? As against what... Um, uh, independent candidate uh, Joseph Osei, Jacob Osei Eboa, had just sent me. He says, Samson, fix the country is a process of self-organization from organizational behavior experts. So each person will say his or her fears. That makes fix the country more dangerous. Each person's fears will be aggregated into a focus policy later. The government should rather be the one doing the collation of the issues uh, and, and listed on the placards to find solutions to them. Perfect. So I'll go with the last one as a practical measure, which is to say, once you've seen the issues uh, written on the placards, you tabulate them, you copy them out. And Samson, that's not the first time mm. we have a plethora of acts of parliament which say that a person can make a complaint orally. Okay, so you take freedom of information. 
you can make a uh, listen, make a request orally. You go to Shrad, you can make a complaint orally. Uh, mm -hmm. The Whistleblowers Act, if somebody wants to blow their whistle and you cannot write, you can make the complaint orally, and so on and so forth. So you see that in governance, let's not be too book long. A man has got a, a placard, and the one that caught my heart was that um, they, they are trying to buy watches, and people in government are buying V8. Then it reminded me of the president, one of his first promises when he took office, that there is a moratorium on the purchase of V8. Yeah. Today, I'm sure the jury is out as to whether we are still observing that. So when you've seen such a placard, and also I'm very happy that uh, Uncle Ben Epstein put it, that was the placard he put in the Daily Dispatch. Yeah, it was very poignant, very, very poignant. We try to buy watches whilst people are trying to earn a living, you are buying V8, buying V8, whilst you have salaries. Okay? It's, it's, is, is that, is that, is, does that not sound smack of populism? Uh, because, look, don't, don't certain persons who are performing certain duties require these sort of vehicles to assist them to efficiently perform? Yeah, in Accra, you know this V8 matter, initially they have said they will keep some in the pool so that if the person is doing cross country, that's a minister or deputy or whatever, he goes to the pool. But that is not being observed. Go to town. You see the whole of Accra is awash with government V8. Such an abuse. Number two, Samson, you work as a lawyer. Haven't you bought your private car? Why is it that suddenly tomorrow when you are appointed as a minister, you think that government should take care of everything for you? fuel, everything. I mean, such an abuse. It's, it's so indecent. I can't believe it that this is the same president who promised I will protect the public purse. But, but, Martin, but, public but, but Martin, you don't have uh, lifestyle audits in Ghana. So the fact that someone is using a V8 will not suggest that, it, it, is it fair to suggest that that is corruption? When you are not doing... Um, uh, like we have suggested before, the, fa the constitutional provision that demands, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of uh, way of approach that, you know, uh, we Account should be... for your wealth. Yeah, we should be monitoring your wealth. If you are buying mm -hmm. anything in public office, you should be able to account for it that you have... This is the source of money from which you buy it. Once we don't have that, is it fair to suggest that if somebody uh, is doing something, then it's corruption? No, I, I've said abuse of the public purse. I've not uh, mentioned corruption yet. Maybe I'll come to that if need be. I said abuse because it was the president himself who said that he doesn't see the need for the V8. So he put a moratorium on the V8. Mm. So that's what we are holding him to account for. That when did he lift that? And is it necessary? What happened to the uh, suggestion that or they would keep some in the pool. So if a minister needs to travel out, then he would go into the pool and take a V8. But now you go to the ministries and you find V8s all over, fresh ones. Mm. So that is the point. Yeah. So coming back to it, mm. so that we went to the V8 because we're saying that the placards have enumerated the issues. Okay, yeah. ad nauseum. Mm. And also, I mean, we all know from the one when Fix the Country started, we knew that unemployment was one of them. So, and so on and so forth. So, uh, nobody can be heard to say that but, without an official petition, the Fix the Country demonstrators have not made out their case. All right. And let me come back also to something you raised. Please, populism, sometimes we make it look like populism is bad, but it didn't start today. Populism has always been in us, except that, you know, sometimes. The, the political winds change from populism to the other. You remember in the US, yes, Donald Trump was populist, he won. So we are not necessarily saying that populism is bad because mm. the ordinary man is hungry, he's starving. Do you, do you, support, do you support the, the, the view, and if you can do that in a minute for me, do you support the, the plan that they are going to continue to other uh, parts of the country, particularly in this time when there is uh, the Delta variant of COVID, and we can see how um, the numbers are rising. Sam, yes, I support. 
but with certain restrictions. Uh, I'm happy Uncle Pipu Baku is in the studio. He, I think he said a time without number that he's even done one man demonstrations. So what I'm saying is that for the rest of the regions, they should ensure social distancing and mm. then cut down on the numbers. Cut down, it's symbolic. So let's say maybe if the police say they can ensure social distancing for let's say 100 or 200, I'll pray with the fix the country demonstrators to go by that. But the demonstrations are very welcome. It's good. Look, it doesn't matter which okay. party you belong to. All right, Martin, thank you very much. Uh, that's about it. That time will allow us. Now, Felicity, the, the question I said you guys should answer before you leave. Um, do you think this is uh, prudent going forward in this time in particular? Um, so considering the fact that the medical, the chief medical director of the country said that open air events do not necessarily um, contribute to the numbers, the COVID numbers, you know, so for me, I'm going to take his word for it. And the reality is that we've had so many super spread, so-called super spreader events. We had the election, we had, we had mass gatherings at funerals. We've, you know, we've been okay with that. So why is it that suddenly when people want to protest, suddenly we want to, you know, have the conversation around COVID. COVID existed when we were doing elections. COVID existed when we were compiling the voters read the new voters register. COVID existed during the Christmas. COVID existed during Sir John's funeral, for example. Um, so why do we suddenly want to focus on, or do we want to protest when there's COVID? And the reality is that for so many people who live in the country, they're, gonna, they're dying of starvation. They're dying to the, to the fact that they can't afford um, three meals. That they, can't, they, they, they are unemployed. They can't, they can't get proper health care. So for them, <laughs> thank, you. Mm. thank you, Felicity. And uh, Hadi Akubu, uh, there's one thing that I paid attention to. You, you had placards on Kaka who was murdered. And you actually took time and ask everybody to go down sort of in respect uh, for him. And we're saying all sorts of things. Um, uh, why that? Why that attention? Uh, yeah, that's not all. Um, Kaka's family uh, was actually at the protest. In fact, his daughter spoke and um, you couldn't help it. Everybody was down in tears. It, it was so emotional. Um, we, 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 the, the reason for all this is because Kaka was one of us. Kaka was somebody who consistently highlighted the issues in his community. Kaka was somebody who loved his community. And all he did was to spend his own time, resources, and energy to campaign for the issues facing his people to be uh, fixed. I mean, for that, he received threats and then subsequently murdered. We are still waiting for the investigations to, to, to conclude. But it was important to highlight this as a show of solidarity amongst the people of this country that one person's um, ordeal um, uh, um, is the ordeal of all of us. And we need to be together and we need to highlight these things to make sure that we build a country where people can freely express right. themselves about okay. the things that are happening. All right. Thank you so very much, uh, Hadi Yakubu, Fighter General of the Economic Fighters League, and Felicity Nelson, who is also a convener of the Fix the Country, uh, hashtag Fix the Country demonstration. Uh, I'll take a quick comment from Kuku and then we can move on. I don't know if you want to say something about that. Um, the, there's one thing that, that uh, caught my attention. Uh, you saw Ernesto Yeboa and the rest of them. Ernesto Yeboa is known for these things. And whilst they were going around, as litter was being dropped, they were picking every litter on the way with them. So you could see that they were prepared and really organized. They had also gone there with face masks to distribute, even though you see in the pictures that some people were still not wearing the masks. Yes, well, that, that's quite a, a positive aspect. I've been in demonstrations all my life. I'm on retirement now, of course. <laughs> Unless something very dramatic uh, happens, uh, I'll remain retired. But is the, that aspect, I doubt if I've seen it before, uh, mm. to be honest with you. So it mm. was good. It helps uh, clean the environment, through sanitation. 
spite of the fact that, as you have indicated, there were breaches of the COVID safety protocols, in my candid opinion, not avoidable. It's, it's not avoidable. Mm. Mass gatherings. I hear people point to Sir John's uh, funeral that happened there, and I have to be candid with you. Even my own mom's funeral too. There were such uh, violations mm. to the protocol. You know, we cool. tried as much as possible to contain and control, especially within the church hall. But outside, it was uncontrollable. Okay. So these things do happen, and uh, you need to concede when it happens and. But that aspect was positive, and I, I salute them for that. Um, look, it is, I was happy to see the demonstration take place, also in a very peaceful and orderly manner. It helps, especially against the backdrop of the earlier attempts by the police, attempts by the government to, you know, more or less checkmate it within the context of the restrictions that COVID has brought about. But this one, and the NDC Youth One, with all those obstacles took place, and each of them was peaceful and orderly. It's important. COVID is going to be here for a while. We have the Public Order Act too, and we have the executive instruments, which have imposed all sorts of restrictions. But we should not create a situation where there's a blanket, you know, for instance, a sanction that you would not allow demonstrations. It's dangerous. It's human nature being what it is uh, shouldn't be suppressed unduly. So opening up some limited space here and there, and because of uh, social media and our technology can also be brought on there. They, uh, they are better organized on social media. Very good. <laughs> I like that. Indeed, very early stages, mm. I made that proposal. That they could do small, small actions in the street, sometimes picketing, and can also apply social media and right. technology mm. to expand the scope. Now, the question of their message, I've heard a lot of people wonder what exactly is the message. Uh, it's true, also, everybody goes out there. You see, placards, there are two forms. There are placards that are officially sanctioned by organizers who even sometimes put the messages together. Right. You can see those placards when mm. you see. Then there are placards that are unofficial. The followers coming from their various homes and workplaces will come with all sorts of placards. Mainly, some of them are written in charcoal and chalk and things. And so it can give a certain split messages, but it's unavoidable. There's no big deal there. Okay. Trying to capture what their message is. One thing that struck me for the first time, and I think it's one of the convenience, uh, is it Mr. Vomawo? Vomawo, yeah, That's Oliver. Mm. Yes, I just what he played. He was saying a new constitution for a new generation. Yeah, in terms of a concept, I like that. I'd like to hear that. Whether you agree or not, it's immaterial. Mm. It is an attempt to conceptualize the aspirations and give us a focal point. But at the same time, and I hope it is not a fake video, I saw on social media the same gentleman talking about abolition of the Fourth Republic. You see, it's contradictory. Mm. You cannot talk about having constitutional reforms of whatever nature and call for abolition of the Fourth Republic. They are mutually exclusive. You can seek constitutional reforms within the Fourth Republic, which is what the Constitution Review Commission set out to do. Mm. If those proposals, the recommendations of the commission have not been implemented, I think that there's nothing wrong with the focus on that side. That look, we want the recommendations implemented, operationalized. Right. Government may have differences with that. Number. I've been told, I think recently, the Attorney General's responses to Parliament mm. on an urgent question right. give us a hint mm. of why government is not going along in totality with the recommendations. Mm. But I would advise that the language, the communication needs polishing. You cannot call for abolition of the Fourth Republic in the name of seeking constitutional reforms. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Doc, I, I, I thought we could end this here so that we could go to our next Let issue, very see. important <laughs> matter as well. Uh, but uh, if you can do just a minute uh, on the issue of, uh, like they reply, they say that 
you, the expert, have said that these yeah. uh, open air events yeah. are not uh, grounds to breed anything. Yeah. So yeah. they don't see any reason why anybody should be telling them that um, it's not good to do this at this time. Well, well, first of all, the truth is that um, open air events, the risk is it's a, it's, all, it's a measure of risk. The risk is lower compared to an, an indoor enclosed event. It's only minimized. It's I mean, not. I'm, I'm, I'm measuring risk. All right. Yeah, and mm. it doesn't mean that if you go there without a mask, talking closely to people, your risk is lower. Mm -hmm. So it's a number of things that come together to determine your ultimate risk. But bottom line, like Senior uh, Baku said, you want to have a balancing act between economic and social lives and managing the pandemic. And it's always a very fine act. Now, one line on Fix the Country, I have always said that from 57, and maybe even before Nkrumah became prime minister, any time people went to the polls, they were indirectly telling leaders that please go and fix the issues. As recent as 2000 elections, people didn't vote for Ekufuado because he's the, in code, uh, maybe the most handsome one, the most, it's because they believe that he can help to fix more of the issues that we have. And I just said on one of your platforms that sometimes it might be unfair to look at the number of issues that are existing that's challenges to use to judge a government. You might also have to look at what was bequeathed to the government, how many things that it's tried you to won't, undo. You wouldn't say this if you were in opposition. Oh, I mean, and that's the beauty of democracy. Mm. I mean, from all angles, you have to be tolerant. I'm saying this because we are we're having the ball in our court and working on things. And fixing the country is not an omnibus thing. It will come down into sectors. So you have to fix education, you have to fix water, you have to fix agriculture, you have to fix constitutional rule. And I, th I believe that we are doing a lot to try and address all these things. It's not to say there are no issues in this country. And something, something sometimes it's important to remember what, we, what triggered this fix the country. All right. I think some have forgotten. When we had the power situation becoming unstable some few months ago, and then uh, Ghana Water said they were doing some repairs in Tema. Mm. People were seen uh, using Kufo gallons to get water somewhere okay. from drains mm. and then people put it on social media and the youth join that uh, they want employment i think when we go, if we had our time we could have gone into right. efforts made by government to thank you thank something. you very much uh, dr okoboy uh, 